Greetings and welcome. This video was brought to you by Technically Not a Technician, and for today's video we'll be doing a demo of my newest Simpsons cab and reviewing the Mystery Dawson Experience Simpsons controller fix, coupled with the RetroArch TE config.apk. I also wish to point out that I'll be using the dig front end, and I've done a little modding to the default blank theme that comes with the app. First, I'd like to say that this is very early in my learning of these software combinations, and not everything works as well together as I had hoped. However, the Mystery Dawson experience could not have been easier for me, and as long as you can read, the software will walk you through it. Team Encoder could not have made this fix any easier. If you'd like to check out Team Encoder's Mystery Dawson experience, then please check out the link in the description. I believe we owe Team Encoder a big thank you for all the hard work. If it wasn't for their great works, many of these fantastic mods would not be possible. Thank you, Team Encoder, for all you do. With all that said, let's start our review. I've heard a great deal of talk in our community about a front end called Dig, and I decided to give Dig a try. In truth, it's very simple to use. I was able to install it on my test unit and play around with it. In fact, I was so impressed with the app that I decided to support the creator of Dig and bought the pro version of the app. When testing this via Android emulation and on my smart device, it ran stable, and I was even able to skin one of the blank themes that come with the front end. One could say it felt perfect. When installing it in my Simpsons cab, I had to sideload dig. The APK did install, and the program worked. However, it's not as stable on my Simpsons cab as I had hoped. That said, it may be the APK I'm installing from, and if time permits, I may look into finding a cleaner copy of dig. For now, this less stable copy will have to do. Dig, however, is very easy to use, and if you've worked with emulator front ends, you'll see features that you've seen on other platforms. For example, you can pick ROM paths, clone systems to make your own custom system, or import cover art. Dig works natively with RetroArch, and both work very well together. RetroArch is, however, a completely different program. For those of you unfamiliar with this program, RetroArch is an emulator core manager. In short, think of RetroArch as a program that works well as a back-end and lets you manage your emulators, ROMs, preferences, controls, and, in truth, much more, all from one program. Because these software combinations are all new to me, I wanted to see how many completely different emulator cores with ROM sets I could load up and get running. As far as the arcade cores that are native to RetroArch, I had heard that the controller fix worked well, and I've got to say that seems on point. One rumor I heard that I'm very pleased to confirm is that when launching a game, Player 1 will be set to the first controller utilized on your Simpsons cab. Player 2 will then occupy the next set of controls used, and so on and so forth until all the player controls are used or until you run out of player spots on the game. This is kind of nice for gaming space when you have less than four players, giving each player more room to play and enjoy the game. I have no idea if this is RetroArch managing the controls or if this is the controller fix making this magic happen. It may even be some crazy pairing of the two programs. What I can tell you is that it seems to work well and helps maximize your space when playing games with family, friends, and loved ones. When trying out the arcade emulators, I went with time-tested ones that I've used on other platforms like Batacera and Retropie. I picked Main 2003 Plus and Final Burn Alpha 2012. I also removed ROMs that I didn't think would work with the arcade controls we have on the Simpsons cab. Games with too many buttons, like gun games, racing games, or anything else that wouldn't fit well within our control limitations. I did try to keep a few three-button games, as I may wish to try to remap two buttons to act as one using RetroArch. However, that will be for another time. I'm very happy to see that every game from my ROM set worked with these emulator cores without any issues at all. In fact, with the controller fix, RetroArch worked right out of the box. When using Dig as the front end, I did have to remember to change the settings from the default RetroArch to the 32-bit version, but that's nothing to complain about and took very little action. I did, however, have a few issues. The first is exiting the game. Dig doesn't seem to have a native exit strategy when exiting a game, and as of making this video, I'm still using the escape key on my keyboard to back out of a game and into Dig. Exiting via the escape key is native to RetroArch, and ideally will need to be mapped to an unused button. This isn't a big deal when testing, but I do like my mods to be standalone and not need outside intervention to be managed. 
I believe I should be able to find a key combo in Retroarch, I just need to spend a little more time looking. I have a few other issues too, but I believe most of them are due to the software versions I'm using. I don't wish to report misinformation, so I'll learn more before reporting. I also played around with adding as many consoles as I could, that looked as if they would work, with the native two-player controls found on the Simpsons cab. In short, they all loaded, and I was able to play many of them. Again, I will need to work on the Dig app, and see if I can get a stable version working with my cab, and I'll need to work a little on the mapping and find an exit strategy. In conclusion, this has been a fun project, and it's nice to have software options that work together to give me as much as I can get from my cab. Dig really is very intuitive and easy to use, and the control fix is as simple as you can make it. And who doesn't love the flexibility of Retroarch? Thank you so much for checking out the demo. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, then please help me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video, leaving me a comment, sharing this video with a friend, or sharing it on social media. If you've not done so yet, please consider subscribing. These are all small clicks for you, but they mean the world to this little channel. Thank you.